All right, you are live. We are live. Okay. That off of there. Okay, so it's Lisa, Quilting in the Valley, and we're gonna do another quick video on some of the features and functions in the touch screen machines, particularly the um, four series, the five series, the seven series, and even the eight series. These all work the same way in the menus I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna talk today about stitch combi mode memory, and um, I'm gonna show you a sewing advisor because I people do not use sewing advisor enough and it is such a cool feature. So. Come on in closer, let me show you sewing advisor. So on this particular model, this is a 570, I have to touch the um, this button to get this menu up. On your, and on the four series, on the seven and eight series, these icons are already at the bottom of your screen. So let me show you what this little dress mannequin is. This is the coolest thing ever, you guys. Touch the little dress mannequin. Let's say you're doing something you don't very often do. You're, you're, you're doing a home deck project and you're not exactly sure how you should sew it or how you should set your machine for it. Remember, Bernina sewing machines are automated tension machines. So if you tell it what you're going to do, it sets itself for optimal performance so that you have a great experience with your sewing machine. So let's say you have to repair a pair of denim jeans. So if you see here, this is all different kinds of fabric. So I touch the little sewing advisor, the mannequin. Here's my breadcrumb. If you remember from the last video, my breadcrumb is up here. It's a little trail of where I'm going. When I touch the mannequin, it brings me into the fabric choices. The top row is woven fabric. Lightweight, medium weight, heavyweight denim. The next row is knit fabric. Lightweight, medium weight, heavyweight. And then the fur coat is fur. The bottom row, that's terry, so looped fabric. The next one is plush, like minky. This uh, cowhide is leather. And then this is lace. It's, it's a kind of weird looking lace, but it's lace. So let's say for this particular thing, we're gonna work on repairing a pair of jeans. So we're gonna touch the denim. And then you have your choice. Here's my breadcrumb. So there's where I started. There's the next thing I started. And I'm gonna choose what I'm gonna do. So I can do some decorative stitching. I can quilt it. I can put a zipper in. I can do a joining stitch. I can um, um, quilt it that way. I can put a buttonhole in. I can do a uh, edge stitch or I can just do a hem. So let's say I wanna just hem or seam some denim. When I touch that, look what happens on the screen. It tells me to use a 9110 needle. It tells me, a jeans needle, there's a J there. It tells me to use polyester 100 weight thread, 100 slash two thread. It tells me to use stitch number one, and it tells me to use foot number eight D. Here's where the magic comes into play. So I get my needle, I get my foot, I got my thread, and I hit yes. Look what it does to my screen. So it just switched my tension. It made the tension go way up, changed my foot for me. It changed my stitch length to 3.5 from 2.5. And it set me for that stitch. I am ready to go. The tension is gonna be perfect if I do everything it told me and the tension and the, the foot and the stitch, everything is set for me. And now I can do that technique and it's gonna come out like a professional did it. So that's an underused function. Again, that is the sewing advisor, which is the little mannequin right there. One of the other things I wanna show you is that all important instruction manual. If you guys have not been in here yet, this is a cool place to go. So let's say you've forgotten how to oil the machine. Let's go to troubleshooting, lubricating the machine, and lo and behold, what do you get but a video? that shows you exactly what to do. A drop down there, a drop there, a drop there. And step-by-step -step written instructions. I go back, I can go back. I forgot how to thread it. I forgot to thread the top thread. It's showing me step-by-step 
exactly what I need to do all the way down to the needle threader. And that's in that manual. There's all kinds of things in this manual. Embroidery techniques, um, hooping, how to use the BSR, quilting techniques, all kinds of stuff in here um, to help you out live while you're in the middle of this and you don't have to go digging through the manual to see if you can find it. You can usually get it right in here and a lot of these things have videos. Okay, so let's talk about some of the stitches. Let's talk about, I'm gonna hit clear because I wanna get back to, whoops, I wanna get back to what we, uh, what we are gonna work on. Anyway, so here we are back on our regular screen. We just have our straight stitch selected. Let's say I want to put a combination of stitches together to make like, I don't know, maybe I'm making a baby blanket and I am gonna stitch down the binding on that baby blanket because babies and laundering and whatnot's rough on hand binding. You're not gonna hand bind it. So let's say I'm gonna do some decorative stitches and I wanna put a pattern of decorative stitches together for babies. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna choose the 900 catalog, which has, or folder, which has all of my baby stitches in it. You see this little plus right here? I'm gonna touch that little plus. Now that stitch I had on there is gone. That plus box has a white outline on it, and right here it says I have zero of zero stitches selected. Now I'm gonna take a baby bottle, and I'm gonna add a buggy, and I'm gonna add, what shall I add? Let's see what else is baby like in here. A butterfly, an umbrella, a rubber ducky, maybe a fish. Um, what else, what else we got that looks like a baby? Hmm, I do a dog bone. Sure, we'll put a dog bone. <laughs> okay, so now you see all those stitches are in a row. See how they're all in there? So when I stitch this out, it's gonna stitch one right after the other. You see on this screen right here, see the numbers now? I have, th this is the third one is highlighted, the blue one is the one I have selected. So it'll start with the blue one because I have that selected. That's third out of seven stitches. If I wanna rotate between those, I can just use those arrows and arrow up or arrow down. And that shows all those stitches in my chain. When I start stitching, it'll start up at stitch one, which is the baby bottle. It'll go from this directly into the baby buggy, directly into the next thing. It'll do all seven items. When it gets done with the seventh one, it starts immediately with number one again. And it'll just stitch that pattern over and over and over. And then you stitch your binding down with that. Now, let's say um, I wanna save that because I'm gonna make a bunch of baby blankets and I want all of them to have that, that stitch on the binding. I'm gonna to touch the heart, and you'll see a whole bunch of folders opened up here. The one folder right here has an arrow going in it. That means I wanna put something in that folder. I'm gonna to touch that folder. There's my stitch pattern. I'm gonna hit the green button. And now, if I wanted to go in that folder, oh, okay. and apparently it's not in that one, there you go. Want to go in that folder and get that stitch back out, that's all I have to do. There it is. Every time I go back in there, that's going to be there until I trash it, which I can do by putting it in the trash can. So I can always go back and get that stitch out of there, and I can stitch all of my baby blanket bindings on the same way. How do I get out of that? A couple different ways. See the eye on the screen? Let's say... Let, let, let's do something yeah. different. Let's say I decided I don't want the dog bone in there. That was number seven. So let's say I don't want that one in there. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna touch the eye and there's a trash can. I just took that off. So now I have six of six showing. I'm on six of six. And let's say I don't want the umbrella. I can trash that. Now I only have five left. And let's say that butterfly looks kind of weird. We'll take that out. Now I have four, and they're all babies. So I got the baby bottle, I got the buggy, I got the rubber ducky, and I got a fishy. 
So I can save it like that. Easy peasy. Let's say I want to get out of the whole thing. I don't want to do a stitch combination. If I touch this X, it's no longer outlined in white. I go right straight back to my straight stitch, which is where I started before I touched that little square. So that's kind of a cool way to mess with some of your stitches. I'm not gonna do any more today. You guys can play around with that. So I would recommend that play around with Stitch Advisor. So go in to that mannequin and do some different things in there. Do some, choose some different things and see what it does. Just explore, see what it does to your tension, see what it tells you to do with your needle. Um, see what it tells you to do with the different kinds of thread. So, it, you know, you can't just use one kind of thread for every application. It's not going to work professionally and last the way you would want it to. So play around with that stitch advisor. Get familiar with that so that when you need to use that, you get right in there and get set up and you just, you just have a, a smooth sailing for any kind of technique you want to do on these machines. And then play around with your combi mode. Play around with that little plus Add some stitches in there, save them in your folder, delete them, save them, delete them, save, and just play around so that you get used to that functionality. Um, the next video that we will do will cover um, some more fun things that you can do in some of these stitches. Maybe we'll show you how to do the buttonhole. That is so cool. So maybe we'll do that next. All right, that's it for today. Play around with those two things. It's fun.